You have a redundant sound with that? I don't know. Oh, we're still going to have a redundant sound. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they are. Well, we're... <laughs> hey, Hello. welcome back to another edition of Saturday White Live. We're here again. This is going to be a kind of a special edition this week. We got a real treat for you, okay? <laughs> possibly. 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 <laughs> Either way, it's going to be a treat. Yeah. It's going to be a treat because the content's awesome. It's going to be a treat because we all have a little mini meltdown, okay? Yeah. We're, we're going to try some on location recording today. Um, I'm going to go back here in just a second to our peeling bay and show you some footage of how we do the, uh, the hand peeled logs and, and timbers. What? How does that make us unique, Josh? Well, you know. We're going to talk in all aspects, basically from the tree standing in the forest all the way to getting used in your house, hopefully, so and how they're processed along the way. So one of the steps in that process is we give you the ability to to actually have a a, a hand hewn or a personal touch on every individual log. I'd like to say we're probably the only log home company in the industry that doesn't do it by machine, that actually does it by hand. So. I'm going to go ahead and take off out there and get set up. Hopefully this is going to work. And uh, I'm going to let you talk about dead standing timber. We'll do it live. We'll All figure right. it out one way or the other. We'll see you all later. All right. So, so yeah. So here we are, uh, middle of June uh, for Satter White Live here on this Thursday. And, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, we're here in Texas, got customers all over the world, all over the country. Um, but... Uh, uh, you know, we're used to Texas June, which is basically early summer for us. Uh, but, you know, where we're actually doing our logging, we, we log uh, dead standing Engelman spruce, which is the highest growing tree in North America, where these trees grow are literally higher than uh, your ski resorts that you go visit if you, if you go to the mountains in the, in, in the Rockies. So our trees are looking down on the ski resorts. So that's how high in elevation we are. All that being said, yeah, it may be early summer here in Texas, but in, in the mountains in Utah, we literally have had snow on the ground up until last week. We had, what, uh, what was it, a mini blizzard last week, Danny? Um, it was so where, bad that um, Interstate 70 was shut down from Cheyenne to uh, Laramie, Laramie, Wyoming. Yeah, I saw that. In our neighborhood. I saw that. So we're going to actually roll through some pictures to just kind of give you guys a feel on what it takes to log these trees that we find so valuable because the dryness of them being dead standing. Um, so let's jump into that. Yeah, so this is early, uh, early summer, late spring, whatever you want to call it, June, uh, in the high Rocky Mountains in Utah where we're logging these trees. So uh, talked to Nick Satterwhite last Tuesday. They literally had uh, that blizzard come through and it still had over an inch of snow on the ground last week. Uh, temperature was, I think, 19 degrees the other morning. Yeah, June in Utah, snow on, or uh, ice on the ponds, uh, and they're out there fishing. Those mountain lakes, they don't, I mean, some of them probably still have ice this week. We had a, uh, what did Sam's email say? It was 17 degrees at the sawmill last week. And then just, just two days, three days ago, we got our first load of logs down off the mountain. Yeah, we've been sitting on go like a runner in the blocks, ready to start logging this season for weeks now. Uh, because, you know, it's hard uh, over the winter, um, our log deck or, or log supply, and I'll show you some pictures in a, in a few minutes, 
literally gets dwindled down and we're having to, kind of like a barren hibernation, we're having to live off what we were able to log uh, this time last year. So we've been literally chomping at the bit to get back in the mountains and start logging again to replenish our log deck so we can continue to not fill not only house orders and produce uh, uh, house logs for, for homes, but also timber orders and, and this, that, and the other for people all across the country. That's our forester, Bill Snow, who he's retired now. This is a few years ago, but I spent the day up on the mountains with him and he was checking almost daily to see are the roads too muddy to support uh, the log trucks because it's a, it's a lot of weight, 80,000 pounds on a load. And uh, it, it is dangerous too because they're dropping, I don't know, 10,000 feet off that mountain. No, it's not quite that much, but uh, but yeah, and so what many happens thousands to, of feet coming yeah, down and what ground. happens to that snow, even though the snow might be melted, what does that do to the ground underneath it? So now we've got a muddy mess that we've got to try to navigate as well. We do try to do a little winter logging from time to time, but uh, but that's not a not a strong source of materials. No, I mean, we don't get the volume at that time. You know, like Danny says, we have to have a, the ground has to be frozen enough to drive on. We have to be able to access uh, uh, these timber sales to log these material and get it off the mountain. It's, it's a hard thing to do in the winter, almost impossible. But like I said, when you've got the demand that we've got, uh, we've got to do what we've got to, to keep the supply rolling. This is a little later in the spring. We've removed the dead timber off that hillside in the background. That's how we leave a forest. We're not clear cutters. We only take those dead trees. And so um, all the young, healthy growth really helps them out for us to, to take those trees out of there. Here's one of our lady truckers driving. A, can you imagine a, a little small woman driving a giant logging truck down that hill? Yeah, like Danny said, a change in elevation, what, maybe 10,000 feet? Where you, uh, I mean, you go way down the hill from where this site was and you look off the overlooks on the mountain roads and the, the city down below looks like a little toy town, just little lights and things. It's just tiny, tiny, tiny way down there. We get into some helicopter logging from time to time, depending on the requirements of the sale. Uh, all this timber comes from the United States Forest Service. So um, it is the most responsibly managed forest in the history of the world. Yeah, well, you know, like Denny said, working closely with the Forest Service, um, depending on what sale it is, if we have to helicopter log, we do. That was a really neat thing that uh, some of us got to witness, at least uh, via video, a couple years ago. Um, and it's day in, day out. I mean, look at look at the side of this mountain. Like Danny said, removed the, the dead standing timber, left uh, the trees that were still, uh, still alive. And, and just look at the scale of, of what you're seeing there, the... the Skitter, you know, loading on to the log truck. Uh, you know, look at the, that's a small log deck there on the mountain. So they're basically logging from the mountain to a holding spot, a small log deck on the mountain to load on a tree to come back to the yard. We've only got maybe a 90 day window. If you back up to that for just a second, I'll back up. Um, I mean, you can see the leaves turning there. That is autumn and that's the end of the season. But where we're camping, you can see, uh, you know, it's recreational. There's, there's uh, people on four wheelers and you can see somebody camping. Uh, that's actually a public campground in the forest service there. So uh, yeah, very beautiful country. And here we are loading, loading logs. This is the end of the season, but. but that's again, a serious log deck there on the mountain. We've got like a, maybe a 90 day window to get out a year's supply of timber for and all the hundreds of log homes that we sell every year. Right, and those trucks, you know, once we get a, once we get uh, logging, you know, good, and start accumulating log deck on the, on the mountain, those, uh, those, log, those logging trucks are running almost nonstop, uh, as many loads as they can get in a day, um, uh, loaded and, and back down the mountain. Blake is not patient. I'm sitting here watching the live feed and he's back in the office waving the camera around at Kim. <laughs> he's been back there. We'll have to cut back. That's our, uh, that's our principal sawmill in Gunnison, Utah. Um, but we're going to have a little tour of the, um, of the sawmill here in Longview, which is substantial in its own right. We have multiple sawmills around the country. That's right. 
So a lot of timber, thousands and thousands of truckloads will be coming off that mountain, off the mountain, not, going to not just a mountain, many mountains. All I'm seeing is black on this. All, I'm, see, all I'm seeing is black on this little re return. That's because I hadn't cut Yeah, everything's going good. We're, we're talking about you and Kim having fun. So, yeah, you're doing great. Just head on out. This is there. live. We're figuring this out. We're going to cut to Blake in a, okay. in a minute. All right. I'm we're doing it live, folks. Um, yeah, so this is one of our log trucks rolling into the yard, uh, fully loaded. Look, uh, you know, depending on where you're at in the country, where you're at in the world, you might see log trucks. Uh, you know, in your neck of the woods, but uh, to me, very rarely do you see them as, as heavily loaded as this, just because the dryness of our dead standing spruce allows us to pack so much volume on there with such a small amount of weight. So, yeah, we will we will come up uh, close to the to the weight limits for the truck, but not until those trucks are completely fully loaded like that. Uh, here's a log truck with some monster spruce rolling over the scales in Utah. Uh, so we weigh them coming in so we know uh, the weight that we've got, make sure that we're good on the trucks uh, before we unload and get ready to transfer to our log deck on the yard uh, to start the production process. You, you wouldn't think that what a ferocious amount of paperwork is involved in doing all this, but we have to keep all those tickets. Uh, there's a, a lot of paperwork that is tagged on to each load by the Forest Service because uh, because we pay them for this wood. Yeah, it's tracking a, it's all a that. It's a contract. Yep. And, of course, all the people involved, the truckers, the loggers, everybody gets paid by those weight tickets coming in. So there is a incredible amount of paperwork that goes on up in the, in the mountains. I'll yeah. tell you what, Sam Satterwhite is so proud of that truck, and he likes to show this picture to all his logging buddies in other parts of the country because that scene and, and that is our uh, the the at our sawmill and yard in Gunnison tells you how arid and how those trees are naturally dry because any logger that works in this part of the country can look at that load of of logs and how straight and beautiful they are and they cannot believe that a truck can haul that that would that would destroy a truck to put that much wood on it if those logs were wet uh, it would, you know, it would put a multiplier on the weight involved. Yeah, and and for yeah, and exactly right, Danny. But just for some of you that may not know, literally what we're talking about, a green tree, uh, a live tree that still is full of moisture um, because it's transferring, you know, from the ground to the tree uh, to stay alive, is so much more, is so much heavier than a dead standing tree that's, that gravity has literally pulled the, the moisture back out of. So, so when you pick up a log, and, you, and you, if you've done any construction in your own, you'll know that uh, when you're using like a standard two by four, whatever, something, you know, SPF, some, some just framing material, how light that is compared to a pressure treated. Well, the pressure treated is not heavy because it's pressure treated, it's heavy because it's been penetrated with all that liquid uh, in the pressure treating process. So it's that moisture content that creates the weight and it's exactly what Danny's saying um, that, that makes it impossible for a lot of loggers in a lot of parts of the country to be able to carry that kind of load uh, in green trees. They'd never be able to come anywhere close to that, but we can because our trees are so light. All, all wood, no matter who your log home company is, all wood must be dried for any application, whether it's to use in framing lumber or anything. It has to, that water content has to go. And the thing with a massive piece of log or a, a wood, like a, uh, people ask, oh, why don't you kiln dry it? Well, you can kiln dry wood that is being sawed into small pieces like a two by four or you know, the kind of things that you would buy at the home center, but you can't saw something, a large timber, and reliably get all the water out of it with kiln drying or with any man-made process, air drying, or the, that's the reason we're such fanatics about going out there in this arid country that you see there and, and cutting yeah. trees that have been dried, dead, they're dead, killed by natural causes, and they've stood in that forest and dried naturally over time. Yeah, and, and just like you said, Danny, all the adverse conditions that they have, that we have to go through to log them to get them down. When we have plenty of trees in East Texas that we could harvest, but we choose not to for the the mill doesn't look like that today. We're starved for timber because, like we say, the the trucks. We're all excited around here because the trucks started rolling two or three days ago. Right. But uh, we're we're getting ramped up again.
That's right. Yeah, we're that that demand is there, and we're uh, fulfilling some of the supply, um, just like a like a bear through hibernation. That's come that's woken up for the spring and ready to eat. That's the way our mill is uh, for for a log deck right now. This is just the process. That's called the head saw, and that's the first place that uh, those trees off the mountain go through in there and they get squared up into camps. I'm going to go through this because I see sure. books out there waiting. Sure. Uh, after they're squared off into camps, that's the milling machine in Utah. We've got one here in Utah, in uh, Texas as well. I don't know if uh, Blake may get back there. That is a noisy, noisy operation when these big machines. And this is the purpose of it all is seeing that if you see that 13.2% moisture content on that electronic meter on that and we're measuring that log at the we keep track of what's the bottom end of the, the top of the tree and the bottom end of the tree through our entire manufacturing chain so the bottom is always going to be the wettest because of gravity uh, taking water while that tree's standing can i give them a little hint that, that might make them a little bit of a log expert danny yeah it's kind of easy to keep track of which is the butt end because the butt end is 99.9% .9 of the time has a bigger diameter than the small. Um, so so uh, if you're wondering how we do that, there's like, there's no way they keep track of that. Yeah, it is because we, we just go to the big end and that's where you moisture test it. And okay. every single piece gets moisture tested on the butt end, on the big end. Should we, should we cut to Blake for yeah. a minute here before his arm falls Yeah, I, th I think we should. <laughs> Let's go to, let's cut live to Blake. And to we'll, our man we'll on the street, Blake talk. Linton at the Peel Bay. Yeah. And this is live coming to you. Uh, Blake shooting this and he will see. <laughs> this is kind of beyond the, after the manufacturing process, but we're seeing hand peeling. When we do, uh, put those finishes on wood, it is literally done by hand, just like the pioneers did, did, did it with the same tools and uh, it's hand worked. Now, is, is Blake able to talk on this, Danny? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my earbuds on and see. Okay. As I promise, Martine makes it look easy, but as you can Do tell, know I kind of go down here. Let's see. I'll kind of get a close-up view. Well, I'll try not to step on his toes. Let's see, that's just showing showing that we basically on here we're yeah, taking here we one go. of those trees that we cut and turn it into a into a camp we're running it through our taking that outer, outer layer off a and five inch dowel rod giving it a now, real uh, rustic so it looking look texture like so again this is five inch spruce round stock and we're taking this off of here from you know, got to kind of deal with the knots and stuff so like I said, it's definitely not as easy as it looks. We're gonna show you a few more seconds of this, and then we're gonna head back to the to the saw and show you how we saw some of our timbers. All right, let's see. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Now this is gonna be kind of behind the scenes here. Let's see. Then you wanna cut back to the slideshow while he makes his way down? <laughs> Man on the street. <laughs> well, hold on. Okay. We're going back here with Brandon Oney, our mill manager, who won't let me get him in the shot. We're going to run back here. Hopefully, this won't bore you too bad. But uh, I'm going to try to get inside the saw cab so it's a little bit quieter and uh, get get you up close and personal view of how our saws run here at Satterwhite. Alright, let's see. Bear with me on the noise for just a few seconds and uh, we'll get in here. Brandon, what are we going to be sawing today? Native cedar. Native cedar. So he's getting back we're going to take a native cedar tree. We're going to cut it into whatever dimensions the customer requires. It's, you can see the off, back of the office building quite distant in the background. Oh, yeah, that building is at least 300 feet tall. 
Cedar trees, and we're cutting this into. It looks like two bay. This is just tough to do. This is a 40 inch capacity. So they're in a the soft cap here. Saw. I don't know if you can tell if that was protected with uh, uh, safety glass in front of them. About 28 inches wide. Uh, so that they're, so, they're as you can see, we're, but they're still close enough to see what's This started out as a native cedar tree, Josh, and we're cutting it into two bay. That saw cuts down and back, so it's very efficient. What's he cutting here today? Pretty complicated like, control, like Josh, control panel cedar, here, but Nicasio yeah, makes it look cedar, like Eastern easy, easy. Yeah, it's not cost effective for us to, to haul whole trees back from uh, the Rockies to, to Texas. They have to be sawed down. Uh, well, on, we're going to show you, he's going to roll this next tree so out, we and we're really going to show you start to finish a huge amount. how we go from a, a round tree a to a piece of dimensional lumber. So we are, we are uh, sawing some of the woods that we would use. What, what Look at applications do people buy cedar for, Josh? Look at that size of that tree. Uh, we do exterior applications uh, like pergola packages, uh, porch beams, uh, gable end material like board and batten. We also make it into tongue groove material. Hopefully uh, like you're enjoying this. Not many people uh, get to see behind the scenes room, of how this works. Siding. We make it in countertops, just like this awesome countertop sitting here in front oh, of us. Oh, Nicasio, he's the best in the business when it comes to running one of these saws. Making that first Go ahead and take the top seat. part off and start getting your square edge. This tree will make absolutely beautiful dimensional lumber. Look at that beautiful red heart in that cedar. I can promise you folks, this is a lot harder than it looks. Operating this and rolling these trees is not that easy to do. So now he's establishing his second square edge. Yeah, I'm interested to see uh, That's what the beauty the of native cedar. Once you start cutting the into these trees, it reveals that deep red and see how it turned out. But, center, uh, and that's absolutely yeah, what I mean, this was. is opening up a, a world of possibilities. We're, we're, we're definitely uh, uh, mavericks. Uh, we're not afraid to try new things, are we, Danny? Okay, so, so we don't have any back communications to Blake to tell him to move on to something else. You want to go back to the slides or and wait until he resets? That's up to you. These you trees can see what can he's start doing out the whole time so gnarly and then end up with just the most beautiful piece of wood. You know, some of these cedars, we, um, I'm going to turn his audio because it's so noisy out there. So I, there's no audio coming from Blake anymore. Okay. But, but um, what happened? I guess I took the whole thing offline, didn't I? Yeah, it looks like. It looks like we're back on the slideshow. Okay. We'll, we'll cut back to Blake in just a minute. In fact, I'll cut back to him right now. We have some guy handling some trees out there. I only meant to stop the audio, not to stop. <laughs> cut back to our... so he's well, almost got his is fourth square edge cut. And then it looks like this is going to be cut into 2 by 10 material. That's right. 
We'll go back, we'll cut back to uh, Blake when he, because I can see a preview uh, even now, but we're back in our slides. Okay. Uh, so just another fully loaded truck at our office in Gunnison, Utah. Um, and just a good picture of how the dead standing trees are literally uh, still intermingled with the live trees. So it's, it's very important that we do a good job logging uh, to only remove the, the dead trees and, and preserve as much of the forest as possible. So that, so that mountainside, I mean, I don't think anybody loves the mountains and the trees as much as we do. Do you, do you Danny? I'd, I'd love to be out there now. I mean, and Sam as well. I mean, it's a whole culture in the company. We, you know, we, we depend on the trees uh, for sustained business. So it's important that we, that we um, help uh, uh, cultivate uh, a, a new set of trees, uh, you know, for, for the next generation, hopefully, so we can continue Sam's, to do this. Sam Satterwhite's the kind of guy who dreads taking a day of vacation because he would rather be at work. Uh, but people ask, how can there possibly be so many dead trees? Because where most of us live in, in the populated areas of the United States, uh, that's certainly not the case. But what we have out west is uh, for 100 years or more, we've had uh, fire suppression. And what happens when you um, suppress fire and natural mortality is trees are a living thing just like anything else, and they have a life cycle. And the life cycle of Engelmann spruce and lodgepole pine, these high altitude conifers, is about 100 years. And when they get into their senior years, they become vulnerable to tree pathogens. And that's what 100 years of fire suppression has yielded is they all got the same age, they all became vulnerable to uh, infestations, and they all died in mass. Now you can see the younger trees are not affected. It's just like uh, you know the the trees are the diseases that affect elderly people. Um, they're fine. And so what the United States Forest Service is highly motivated for those dead trees to be removed. And Satterwhite's a part of that remediation because that is an incredible fuel burden on that forest. That is actually those dead trees are a threat to the forest. If they catch fire. Uh, the fire is burned so long and so hot that it kills the young ones, and we don't want that to happen. So I anyway, people, the more you know about this, the better you can feel about your Satterwhite home and, and, and these trees, not just, uh, I mean, it's nice to think about how environmentally responsible this is, and that's certainly true, but, uh, but the the material itself, because of that extraordinary dry, dryness that exceeds, uh, almost always exceeds the, the lumber that you would buy at, uh, at a home center or whatever, that dryness means stability, it means they're lightweight, it means, oh, the transportation costs that we incur, because it is considerable to bring wood all over the country, but it's uh, the transportation costs, we can get a lot of trees on, that, on those trucks. Uh, because of the low weight without the water. Sure. Hey, Blake's back. I'm back. Man, that was pretty great. Was it? I didn't know so. Not bad for a first time. Well, Danny, with that, uh, how about we fade out to, uh, to us and uh, we'll do a little wrap up here. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in again for Thursday edition of Satterwhite Log Homes. Man, and the three of us, Danny, Blake, and I, were really brainstorming uh, about some fun new stuff coming in the future. So uh, if you're interested in that, pay, uh, pay attention, follow us. Absolutely. We've got some um, good ideas coming. And if you have any ideas that you want to see, just holler at us. Hopefully that on live remote work yeah work. i'm interested to see it looks great from what i'm saying i'm interested to see what it looked like on the playback but cool. man we sure appreciate you being here look forward to new fun things different things Absolutely. outside of kind of the things that we've been touching yeah. on here to come uh and we're going to continue to have fun and try to teach you something and like blake said um if you got any questions that you'd like us to uh handle or address we'd love to have you thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next thursday thanks god bless